Hey Game Ranks with you today, bringing you the 10 best new iOS and Android games of 2016. This list includes pay games, but there will be a list exclusively for the best free games as well. Number 10, Super Phantom Cat Be A Jumping Bro. So Super Phantom Cat actually has an incredibly unique look. The color scheme is basically saturated pastels, which is, in my opinion, a pretty cool look for a platformer like this. It really harkened me back to Knuckles Chaotix. The art style is obviously very different than that, but the colors reminded me of it. It's not a particularly fast paced or extremely different platforming game. You have the ability to jump and shoot. It's simplistic but it's a lot of fun and I really like the level design. Really Super Phantom Cat is kind of everything I would personally want in a platformer. And while it's by no means going to revolutionize the genre or anything, it's certainly worth it, especially for a mobile game. Number 9, Captain Cowboy is a really interesting puzzle game. It's kind of exploration oriented, so in some respects it's very different from most puzzle games. The idea is to kind of plow through the environment and make way for obstacles, which then allows you to progress further into more obstacles. There's rocks, diamonds, and water, and they all interact with the player in different ways, giving healthy variation to the puzzles. It's a very simple game in concept, as most mobile games are, but thus far I find this to be very easily engrossing. Number 8, Twofold Ink, essentially a color path puzzle game where you're required to jostle around squares with different colors to create a path that allows you to connect all of them. The more you can connect, obviously the higher your score will be. Really, if you're looking for a high adventure, obviously this isn't the game for you, but if you're like myself, a puzzle game enthusiast, this game doesn't just satisfy the itch, it's going to take over your time. I know you're looking at it like, well, good puzzle games aren't that simple. Au contraire. This is one of those puzzle games that you could literally just play forever. And in my opinion, there is no more ring and endorsement than that. Number 7, Lost in Harmony. So what do you get when you cross the PlayStation 1 Crash Bandicoot chase sequences with a rhythm game. You pretty much get lost in harmony. This game is actually really innovative in my opinion. You're often having to tap beats at the top of the screen while having to dodge incoming obstacles on the bottom. This is a two-hand operation and I know that it's kind of going to be confusing at first but in my opinion it's a really great challenge and I appreciate that in a mobile game. I don't know if it's for everybody but I would definitely recommend giving it a try. If you like it you're going to really like it. Number six, Rusty Lake Hotel. Okay, so if you're a big fan of point and clip games and Wes Anderson movies, I don't think you can possibly dislike this game. I'm actually a fan of both. The game sometimes has some quirky puzzles that I'm not 100% on, but they're worth it on account the game is so rich in atmosphere and story. Really, it's beautiful. There is absolutely no other game out there that looks like this, and if you say otherwise, I would like to see what you're talking about because I would like to play it. But that being said, it's extremely apparent that the developers had a lot of vision when they set out to create this game because it's chock full of personality. Number five, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Portal Power. Okay, so if you're familiar with a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game, you are familiar with this game. Now, because of the touch controls, it obviously runs a little bit differently, but you're essentially going after all of the same goals that you would in any other Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. And that's not a bad thing. If somebody says they made a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game for the iPhone, I'm gonna say, does it play like the arcade game? And if it doesn't, I'm not really that interested. Fortunately, it does a great job of bringing that same kind of feel to mobile. And frankly, I really, really enjoy this game and have to recommend it, though I have to say that is a little bit caked in nostalgia. Number four, Venture Kid. Now, without very much thought, you can probably figure out exactly where the influence of Venture Kid comes from. And it takes a lot of the really good elements of Mega Man and also builds upon them. One of my favorite things personally is a shield that reminds me a lot of Proto Man's shield from the original games. Now, it's a little bit more linear than Mega Man and the weapons don't have the same kind of effect on the bosses and the choices you make aren't as important, but it's still a great game that nails a lot of what makes Mega Man good. It also builds on it in a few different ways that makes it an interesting game and worth your time. Number three, Combine Robot is kind of a ridiculous matching game where you essentially match cars in order to create a big robot that fights a giant monster that is attacking the city. And on top of that, the game plays great. I like matching puzzle games, and they've created a really engaging one that makes you feel as though it's action-packed without modifying the genre in any way that really ruins it. It gives you a really enjoyable matching game that actually provides some kind of context to what you're doing that makes it that much more enjoyable. 
Number two, a good snowman is hard to build, is a puzzle game where you essentially have to use the snow on the ground to create a snowman. Now, that doesn't sound too complex, but essentially using up the snow is the goal. It doesn't necessarily sound like the most fun game you've ever played, but when you do play it, you find out that it is incredibly addicting, but it has a lot of personality to it that, like the previous game, Combined Robot, isn't necessarily present in a lot of the genre. You can kind of look at it and understand why it's fun, though, and I would implore you to at least give it a shot. Finally, number one is Crashlands, which is a game that I have to give a massive amount of praise to. This game is designed so incredibly well. The pacing of it is amazing. You will never get bored, even as you're giving what would generally be considered very boring sounding information, learning how to play the game and such. It's essentially a crafting action adventure game that has you stuck on a planet and needing to craft the parts of a spaceship to get off. Very simple concept, very involved involved, well put together execution. Make no mistake, this is a game for the mobile market, but it brings in a lot of the complexity of the handheld market and nails it. A few bonus games for you like Swapperdo, which has a goofy name but is a great swapping puzzle game, Blown Away, which is kind of a platforming puzzle affair with gorgeous art, and Momoka, an interplanetary adventure, which is an extremely stylized platformer that offers a great deal of enjoyment. Have you played any great mobile games this month? Make sure and leave us a comment telling us all about it, especially if it's on this list. If you enjoyed the video, please click like. It helps us out a lot. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week. As always, we thank you very much for watching this one, and we will see you next time right here on Game Ranks.